I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. I bless God for your life. I bless God for every one of you who take your time to listen to this broadcast, the comments you, you make, and the messages you send to me. Thank you. I pray that God will continue to watch over you and lift you up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then I want to encourage, you know, um, I want to encourage everybody. Share. Help us share this message. There may be somebody on your timeline that needs to hear these things. Praise God. God bless you. Can we call for that daily bread? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I bless you, Lord. Our text scripture is from Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatening, and grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now, let me show you something in verse 13. Verse 13, same Acts chapter 4. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Where was their boldness coming from? Now, their boldness was such that it marveled these folks. Now, these were the Let me, let me, verse, verse 1, verse 1, I want, you, I want you to understand the people that were behind this. And as they spoke unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducee came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Did you see that? The priests, the captain of the temple, the one in charge of the temple, and the Sadducees. Now, why were the Sadducees particular? Because they don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. So what got the Sadducees' attention was that they were preaching through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So if Jesus rose from the dead, it means we can rise also from the dead now the, the sadducees you want to offend the sadducee that's it right there is god they said man keep quiet no just like today there there are people who for example there are people who are against titan okay they're against titan those are the like the sadducees of our generation they're against titan so you 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 are preaching fine until you now say you know like you have to pay your tithe or ah you lost them then. you lost them then. in fact you so lost them that they will cancel everything you have been saying that was nice to them they will cancel it they will find a way to put you out of that place <laughs> yes people get that offended you know and then sometimes you want to wonder is this the spirit of god or is this the flesh i'll tell you straight up it is the flesh it is the flesh and you know these people proclaim they love god ask a pharisee do you love god he'll tell you yes why wouldn't i love god i'm a custodian of the oracles of god <laughs> but then in action you see behaviors that don't look anything like god at all and so you wonder but that's the truth about human beings. That's the truth about the situation we find ourselves in. And that's why I am encouraging you, listen, you, when you walk in boldness, you don't look to the left, you don't look to the right. As long as you are convinced of the Holy Spirit. Now notice, what gave Peter and John boldness? The people saw their boldness. And they wonder that it. this boldness is not coming because of their education or no, they now took knowledge that they have been with Jesus. Oh, this explains it. Praise God. This explains it. So it's the same thing today. 
you will not have boldness until you have been with Jesus. There are decisions Jesus would make you take that everybody's going to wonder at you. You see, Maybe you walk in an organization and, and everybody's corrupt, everybody's doing all kinds of things. How do you exercise boldness in that place? Everybody's corrupt, everybody's stealing, everybody's just, you know. Now, here you are, you love Jesus, you know it's wrong. You see, <laughs> So what do you do? I want to walk in righteousness. Yes. But you've got to be bold about it. Oh, you have to be bold about it. You don't walk in righteousness quietly. Say, no, me, I don't want to bother anybody. When they are doing their thing, me, I just walk away. I just, like, because I don't want to see no evil. I don't want to hear no evil. Your life, you're living a wasted life. Yes. If you are righteous, okay, and your righteousness does not influence anybody, you are just being self-righteous. That's what you're doing. So everybody else can go to hell. You only you is preparing yourself to make heaven. That's self-righteousness. And God doesn't like it because you are wasting the knowledge if your righteousness is from the place of knowledge. I know sometimes you don't want to bother anybody, you just want to mind your business. But you know what? In this life, we don't mind our business all the time. There are times when people going to hell becomes our business. Yes. So you find yourself in that so everybody's doing something wrong. You, you, should, you should be praying and telling God, I say, Lord, grant unto me your servant that with all boldness, I would display and speak of righteousness in this office. How? By, by stretching forth your hand and producing signs and wonders when I speak. That should be your heart cry. That should be your heart cry. And one day, the Lord is going to stir up that boldness in you. And you will walk up to them. Now, they're about to share money. There's a deal. They've all done something wrong. And you now say, hey, you guys, when are you going to stop this thing? When are you going to stop? Say, what are you talking about? Hey, hey, hey. if you don't want to be part of this, you now ask them, say, how much have you even gotten from all this you're still? Ah, you, what have you gotten? Ah, <laughs> yakopene You now tell them that, okay, let's do something. Let's give ourselves six months. Let's give ourselves one year. Continue your stealing. I'll continue working in righteousness. At the end of six months, at the end of one year, let's see who's better off. Financially and otherwise, let's see who's better off. That's a good challenge there, brothers and sisters. And you can only take up that challenge if you're bold. So when we speak about boldness, not just carrying your Bible and carrying a home speaker and go, hey, believe in Jesus. Say, ah, that guy is bold though. He's coming every morning to preach. I, I like that guy's boldness. Beyond that, there are, there are times to exercise boldness and we confront people. We confront iniquity. We confront their situations. And you tell them, let's give ourselves one year or six months and watch what will become the, of the two of us. You continue your stealing. I'll continue my righteousness. And at the end of six months, now what are you doing? You are causing the hand of the Lord to come upon you. Now that's what Daniel did. Why are you doing that? Not just to show that your God is bigger. At the end of that time, like let your own life of righteousness convict their iniquity. Yes. Because now you're trusting the Lord that he's, it happened to Daniel. You see, Daniel proposed in his heart. Now, that's the first thing he did. He proposed in his heart that he will not eat of the king's meal. Okay? Now, having proposed in his heart, what should he have done next? Die in hunger? Some believers will say, I would rather starve 
than eat of the king's meat because me i don't want anything i'll eat that'll take me to hell so instead of eating it i would rather starve no sir not good enough why are you not going to eat that i will not eat that because i have seen by the lord what i'm supposed to eat so that's exactly what daniel did now number two you would exercise wisdom let me read it let's 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 go there let's do a little bible study now praise god daniel daniel chapter one book of daniel chapter one Ah, let me start from verse hmm, verse 5 please watch this and the king daniel chapter 1 verse 5 and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat the king watch this the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat king's meat means king's food okay now that's what the king that's what they prepare for the king that's from the king's storehouse and of the wine which he drank did you see that these fellows that have been picked this is not everybody now this few guys that have been picked to work closely with the king the king apportioned the kind of food they will eat from his stock of food and the kind of wine they will drink from his order of wine okay praise god now now imagine that should be the best kind of wine you can have in the country yeah that should be the best kind of food you can have in the country you know that what, you know what i'm talking about mm. so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king now take note there was a program of three years because these guys were brought in as slaves so most likely they were not looking good so the king now said okay you know what let's let's put them through a diet for three years and after three years you bring these guys they'll stand before me and i'll select the best of the best from them okay all right now verse 6 tells us and then let's, let's jump to verse 8 but daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat daniel proposed in his heart he has not told anybody he made up his mind that's what this means daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat now that's to tell you there was something in the preparation of the king's meat that was offensive or that was against the command daniel had received from the lord probably not only daniel probably with the rest of the people you know the the old jewish people would not eat pork meat or eat certain kind of meats or certain kind of food you understand now it could be a situation like that so daniel knew that this food this eating will offend his faith please follow me now but daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the prince of the enoch that he might not defile himself take notes daniel did not rebel daniel did not say me i will not eat to i will not eat to hey have you even thought about it that daniel viewed tasting as a symbol of humility they were giving the wine the king drank. They were giving the food the king eats. And but Daniel said, "Nah, I don't think it's right. Let's let's not eat the same thing." Or there might be something in there that God said we should not eat this. Thing. And the way they prepare this their food, uh, 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 it's not for us to eat. Now that's one who has come to understand the wisdom of God. If God said don't eat this thing, there must be a reason why he said don't eat it. Okay. So it's not about being right or wrong. There must be a wisdom behind God saying don't eat this thing. Yeah. Okay. So now what did Daniel do? He went straight 
to the prince of the Enoch. And I said, sir, please understand with me. I don't want to defile myself with this thing. And these are my reasons. Now God, watch verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the Enoch. Now you understand the kind of conversation they had. It was not a confrontational conversation. It was a conversation, hush, hush. You know, you know hey guy, I don't know. Hey, Danu, yeah. Alpha, what's going on? Um, you know this thing that the guy said the king said we should eat. So, yeah, sincerely if I eat it. Now, already Daniel had built a relationship. Now that's one thing you must learn as a child of God. Wherever you find yourself, build sound relationships out now as a child of god you ought to be a good person and because you're a good person you, you 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 know how to show favor you know how to love people you know how to help people so the easiest people to be friendly are god's people why because we care less <laughs> yes i'm telling you the reason people are not kind because they care too much if I give him my money now, how much will be left? That's a care. If I if I help him carry that thing now, it will not be as though I'm bringing myself down. That's a care. God's children care less. Come on. You need help? Okay. Ah, all right. Let me help you. And it cost him nothing. Praise <laughs> God. So now, Daniel brought himself into friendship with this prince. And I think I told you this thing some time ago. I said, listen, wherever you find yourself, from the least authority that exists in that place. Make yourself known. Be friendly with them. Don't fight anybody. You move into an estate. There's a management in that estate. Get to know them. Be smart in life. Get to know them. It, it, it affects your spirituality. Your spiritual dealings with them. It does affect it. We talked about this sometime back. So the moment Daniel got there, he met the prince. Hey, how no? He became friends with the prince. Okay, that's the head of the eunuch that was taking care of them. Now, verse 10. And the prince of the eunuch said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who had appointed your meat and your drink for why should he see your faces worse liking them, liking them, the children, which are of your sort, then shall ye make me endangered, endanger my head to the king. So the guy shared his concern with Daniel. I, I understand your point, but this is my problem. If I don't feed you with this, when you appear before the king, you're going to look lean, you're going to look different, and then that will cost me my job, that will cost me my head. You know those days, they don't suck you, they kill you. <laughs> you misbehave, they kill you. So he told Daniel, it may cost me my head. Watch this. Then Daniel said to Melza, whom the prince of the Enoch had set over Daniel. Now take note, this is another level of authority. So Daniel was, was in friendship with the prince. That's the one who takes charge of all of them. Okay. Then Daniel was also friends with the direct person who feeds them. Did you see that? The prince is the one in charge of everybody. Now, he's the one that have split them into groups. Daniel, this, this, four of you. This is the person, this is the eunuch that's in charge of you. Okay? Now, he says, verse 11. Then said Daniel to Melza, Melza, whom the prince of the eunuch, the prince of the eunuch is the one who he spoke to before, had set over Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. That's Shadrach, Mishael, and Abednego. So four of them. Okay. Watch this. He said, prove thy servants. Now this guy, of course, knew he had communicated with the prince. Okay. And the prince had shown his concern. So he said, prove thy servants. I beseech thee, ten days. Hmm. He didn't discuss this with the prince of the eunuch. The prince of the eunuch will not have time for this. Be smart in your dealings with life, in the chains of authority and what to communicate with them. People have lost favor because of simple mistakes like this. He discussed with the prince of the eunuch. 
And the priest of New York shared his concern with him. That I can't bear that in three years' time, when you appear before the king, I may lose my head. Then Daniel said, it's all right, it's all right. So if I get a solution, we can work out something. So he went to the guy lower than the prince, directly now responsible to them. And he got into a deal of 10 days with him. I call me now. Prove thy servants, verse 12, I beseech thee 10 days, and let them give us pearls to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Now you know the story. 10 days, not 3 years, 10 days. He said, at the end of 10 days, take your decision. So the guy looked at him and said, okay, Daniel, I believe he must have said that this is between the four, four, five of us. Four of you and then me. And, yeah, don't tell anybody. Yeah, all right, 10 days, 10 days. In 10 days, we can repair any damage that I'm about. Yeah, okay. So the guy went into the deal with them. And guess what? In 10 days time, Daniel and his friends were looking the best. They were looking healthiest. <laughs> Praise God. And I believe this guy must have like, okay, Daniel, maybe everybody should be feeding with this your portion. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you see, Daniel took a bold stand, but he was wise about how he went about it. The fact that you have boldness in you, sometimes you might act foolish. Be careful not to act foolish even with your boldness so you're bold but your wrong steps may get into trouble but when you are bold you're wise enough to take the right steps know who to talk to and when to speak guess what you will have your way <laughs> praise god thank you lord jesus my time is up i'll see you tomorrow god bless you bye